Circuit Python scholars, this is Prof G, and in this lesson we're going to move beyond the Circuit Playground. We'll show Circuit Python installed across a series of boards, including a Raspberry Pi Pico board, an Arduino RP2040 board, a Feather board, and an ultra small Cutie Pie board. But the concepts learned will also work on other boards. We'll see how you can use the REPL to identify the modules available for a given board. We'll write code to blink the built-in LED light that's on most boards, and we'll run the same code across multiple boards. This is a nice first thing to do to make sure that a board is set up and working properly. Then we'll see what happens when we try to run this code on a board that doesn't have an LED object, and we'll leverage what we learned about working with multiple NeoPixels on the Circuit Playground to flash a single NeoPixel light that's built into some boards. There's a lot of big learning ahead, Let's code! So here I've got a bunch of boards that run CircuitPython. In an earlier lesson, we already installed CircuitPython and the library files on a Circuit Playground Bluefruit and on a Raspberry Pi Pico W. If you miss those lessons and you're using these boards, feel free to go back and check them out in our playlist. These other boards I've got here include the Arduino Nano RP2040 Connect. It has Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, a microphone, and a bunch of sensors on it. This board here is in the popular Feather format. Feather is just a particular size and set of pin locations. This happens to be a Feather RP2040, but there are lots of different types of Feather boards. This board is nice because it's got a Stemma QT port and a port for pass-through battery charging. And this board here is in the ultra-tiny Cutie Pie format. This is a Cutie Pie ESP32 S3, and despite its diminutive size, it has built-in Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and a Stemma QT port. Now in prior lessons, we learned how to get the files that we need to set up CircuitPython in our libraries on the board. We need to open a browser, head to circuitpython.org, click the Downloads tab, then search for the exact name of the board and download the UF2 file for the board. That's the file that contains CircuitPython. Now these files put CircuitPython on the board and they are board specific. So a Pico UF2 file won't run on a Pico W, for example. Then also click the Libraries tab in circuitpython.org and download the proper version number of the Libraries bundle. Now this folder contains an LIB folder that contains all the possible library files and folders that you'd want to use to extend CircuitPython, including code for running LED animations, working with motors, or reading sensors, and it also contains a bunch of examples that you can use to learn how to use these libraries. Now the library files are not board specific, so the same library files can be used across boards. Do make sure that you download the bundle version number that matches the version number of the CircuitPython UF2 file that you just downloaded though. These library files can be specific to the version number of CircuitPython, and if you want to upgrade the UF2 to a higher number, you should also upgrade your library files as well. Next, you need to put your board in bootloader mode, which is the state we need to be in to drag over the UF2 file that we just downloaded, which will install CircuitPython. Now the way to get into bootloader mode might vary according to your board, and the best way to find out how to get into bootloader mode for your board is to search for the Adafruit Learn Guide for your board. For example, for the Circuit Playground Bluefruit, you double click the reset button and your board will show up mounted on your computer as C Play Boot. For Pico and Pico W boards, you hold down the boot cell button while plugging in the board and it will mount as RPI-RP2. On the Arduino Nano RP2040, you double tap the reset button. The board also mounts as RPI RP2, which is the case for any board with the RP2040 chip. For the Feather RP2040, you need to hold down the boot boot cell button, and while holding it down, also press and release the reset button. That'll be mounted as RPI RP2 as well. And for the Cutie Pie ESP32 S3, you need to click the reset button once, and then click it a second time about a half second later. And it'll be mounted as Cutie Pie. S3 boot. And if you have a hard time getting your board into bootloader mode, the learn guides also have troubleshooting advice. And then once you're in bootloader mode and your board is mounted with the correct name, it should not be listed as circuit pi when in bootloader mode. So do not drag the UF2 file over when it says circuit pi. Continue to work to try to get it into bootloader mode. You'll see a name that is not circuit pi and that should be listed in your learn guide. Then drag over the UF2 file that's specific for that board. Once you do that, your board will dismount from your desktop and then it should remount with the name circuit pi. Then you got circuit python on your board. We should only need to do this once per board, or we do it again if we upgrade to a newer version of CircuitPython. And if you run into any problems, you can search online for a troubleshooting guide, and you can also post to forums.adafruit.com or use the firm's Discord channel where there are lots of super smart and super friendly folks ready and willing to help newbies skill up. Now this two-step process of getting into bootloader mode, then copying over the right UF2 file for that board, is going to be the same for any of the microcontroller boards. Just be sure to consult the learn guide first, in case there are any changes in the procedure. Installing CircuitPython on single board computers like the Raspberry Pi computers is a bit different. Now when we refer to Raspberry Pi here, we don't mean the Pico microcontroller boards that are also by the Raspberry Pi company. Raspberry Pi computer boards are usually numbered boards, Pi 0, Pi 3, Pi 4. 
and I've got a video on my channel and a written guide for setting up CircuitPython on the Raspberry Pi if that's what you're looking for. Now once we have CircuitPython on our board, our board is plugged into our computer and it appears on the desktop as CircuitPy, then we need to create an LIB folder with the libraries that we want to use that are inside the libraries bundle that we downloaded. Now we can't drag over all of these libraries, there are too many, they wouldn't fit on the board. Here's a list of the libraries that my students are using on their Raspberry Pi Pico W boards. This will cover most of the learning videos that follow, but if you ever write CircuitPython code and get an error that says something like no such module, then you probably have to copy over a file from the original LIB folder in the bundles file that you downloaded into the LIB folder on your CircuitPython drive. Now I've actually created my new LIB folder with a subset of libraries that I need on my computer, but once I've got this all set up on my computer, I'm just going to copy this LIB folder onto my board. Make sure your LIB folder is named LIB, all lowercase letters, no spaces or punctuation marks, and when you copy the LIB folder over to your board, it's okay to replace any LIB folder that might already be on your device. And again, these libraries are the same regardless of the board that you're using. So if you have multiple boards that all use the same version of CircuitPython, you can reuse this LIB folder that you set up. So let's find out more about our boards. First, we'll use the REPL to find out more info about our specific board, and then we'll write our first program on that board. First, if you haven't already done the earlier videos in CircuitPython school, we work with a Python editor called Moo. If you need it, you can download it for free at the URL codewith.moo. Just click on the download link, download the version for your computer, and you can also consult the tutorials on this site if you need any extra help. Just remember we're using CircuitPython and not any of the other versions of Python. Now with our board plugged in and CircuitPython installed, I'm going to open up Moo. I'm going to click on the Serial button to open the Serial console. I'm going to drag this window up to give me some more room, and I'll press any key to get into the REPL. And we immediately see the version of CircuitPython and the board that we're using. I'm using CircuitPython 8 on a Raspberry Pi Pico W running with an RP2040 chip. Now, if you've ever used a text-based system before, one of the first things that you might learn to do is to type in help. So I'm going to give that a shot right now. And when I do, I see that help is a function. Well, in earlier lessons, we learned that functions have parentheses after them. Let's try that out. Help, open and close parens. We see a welcome message. Visit circuitpython.org for more info. But we can also list built-in modules with this command here, help modules. So why don't we try that out? I'll just copy and paste it and press return. And wow, will you look at that? All of these modules are in CircuitPython by default, even without copying over any lib files. Now we see a bunch that we've used in earlier videos. There's board, which we've imported and used in almost all the code we've written so far. Here's analog IO, which we've used before, digital IO, rainbow IO. That's the library that has color wheel. There's random. Well, that's neat. And now here's another really useful command. To get specific information about the objects and pins that are available in the board that's currently plugged in, we can enter help and then in parentheses board. But watch what happens here. When I press this, I get an error that says name board is undefined. Remember why we might get that? First, we have to import the board library in the REPL. Then we can say help in between parentheses, pass in board, and wow, will you look at that? There are all of these names that are predefined whenever we use the board library, and specifically when we're using the Raspberry Pi Pico W in CircuitPython. If you're doing this on a different board, you'll see different results in here, but you'll get the same type of information. Now, one of the things you'll want to do is compare what you're looking at here to the pinout diagram for the board. A pinout diagram shows a picture of the board along with the name of its pins. So since I'm looking at a Raspberry Pi Pico W, I'm going to open my browser and I'm going to search for Raspberry Pi Pico W pinouts. If you're using a different board, do the same, but just use that board's name. And a pinout diagram shows for this board and it shows the names of the various pins. Now, this board has a bunch of ground pins. Those are all in black. The red pins are the power pins. V bus is the power that comes from the USB port. We'll talk more about that in the future, but this pin here is the equivalent of the V out pin that we used in the Circuit Playground Blue Fruit. It can have power above 3.3 volts, so we want to be careful with this if we have any devices that can't handle more than 3.3 volts. Remember, we had that issue with the potentiometer when we were working on the CPB. Instead, if you needed to restrict things to 3.3 volts, you could use this 3.3 V out pin here. But also, notice that there are a bunch of pins that are listed GP0 through GP5 on one side. The other side has GP16 through GP28. There are also these pins here that also say A0, A1, A2. We'll learn more about using these A-labeled pins for analog devices like potentiometers in a future lesson. But one of the important things I want you to know at this stage is if we go back to our help output, we also see pins that are named board.gp0 through board.gp22. There's a gap for some of the 
the numbers in here, but we can match up these GP values to where they are on the board when we need to wire things up. And remember, when we work with our Circuit Playground Blue Fruit, our pins on that board were labeled board.a1 through board.a6. Well, here, most of these pins have a different prefix. They're not A, they're GP. Now, if we scroll down, we also see something down here that says stemma underscore I2C. That's a function, and we're going to work with that when we wire up a stemma QT port for I squared C on our Pico. But for now, I also want you to see that there's an object called LED, and that's going to allow us to access the little LED light that's on our Pico board. So keep LED in mind, because I also want to show you the output from some other boards. Now this slide here shows what you would see if you plugged in your Circuit Playground Blue Fruit, entered the REPL, imported board, and then did help, passing in board between the parentheses. And we see lots of predefined objects that we used with our board commands in earlier lessons. So we used speaker, speaker enabled, button A, button B, NeoPixel, these accelerometer objects. And we haven't used it yet, but hey, the Circuit Playground Blue Fruit also has an LED object. And for comparison, let's look at the Cutie Pie ESP32-S3. So this is the output from that board. It has less stuff than the other board, not surprisingly, because it's such a small board. It does not have an LED light, but what it does have is a NeoPixel. That's because there's a single NeoPixel light on this board. So help with board in between parentheses is very handy after you import board, of course. It's often the first thing that you want to do if you're working with a new board. Board, you can get a sense of what's available and you can compare the objects in the output with what you see in a pinout diagram. But now let's use that LED object that we saw and we'll write a bit of code to flash that LED light. Then I'll load the same code on a Circuit Playground Blue Fruit and we should see that the code works on all boards that have an LED. So let's head back to Moo. We'll close the serial console and this will be our blink code. And if you've gone through the previous Circuit Python School tutorials for the Circuit Playground Blue Fruit, you should be able to understand the code we're about to write. We're going to import board, comma, time, comma, digital IO. Then we're going to set up an LED object. We'll call that LED and we'll say equal digital IO dot capital D digital capital I in capital O out. And in parentheses, we're going to pass in board dot and in all caps LED. That's that LED object that we found when we did our DIR board command from the REPL. Then we'll say LED dot direction equals digital IO dot capital D direction dot output in all caps. Then our while true loop will say LED dot value equals true. That will turn the light on. Then time sleep will pass in 0.25 to wait a quarter of a second. Then LED dot value equals false. That's going to turn the LED light off. Then we'll time sleep for another quarter of a second. Then with our Pico W plugged in, let's save, take a look at our board. And look at that, this little tiny light right here is flashing on and off at a quarter of a second, each on and each off. Nice! Now for a true test of the technical amazingness that is CircuitPython and its cross-board compatibility, let's unplug the Pico W board, plug in a Circuit Playground Blue Fruit, save that to the CPB, and look at that. This LED that we might not even have noticed before is also flashing since the CPB also has an LED object on that board that's associated with this particular light. The code that we wrote works here too. Nice. So then let's unplug our CPB. When we do that, we lose our connection. The serial monitor closes, but we can close out of this. Then when we plug in our feather board, open up the console, we can double click and save the code to the feather board. And look at that. Our LED light is flashing on the feather board too. This code works on three separate boards. That is the magnificence of Circuit Python. Feel the power of your code skills. Now let's try that Cutie Pie ESP32 S3. We'll encounter a problem. Can you guess what it's going to be? We unplug the board, the serial console closes, plug in the Cutie Pie, then save our code to the Cutie Pie. Nothing happens on the Cutie Pie, but if we expand the serial console, we see an error. Oh, the module has no object LED. Now remember when we looked at the help board command on the various different boards, remember this slide? The Cutie Pie did not have an LED object. Well, that's why we're getting an error. So be aware when you import board, the library knows exactly what's available for your board. And if you try to use an object that isn't available on your board, your code will crash. But if we look back at our help board output, we can see that the Cutie Pie RP2040 does have a NeoPixel object. So let's save this code to our CircuitPython school folder as Blink so we have it handy to use in the future. 
And then let's return to our code, save this back to our cutie pie board as code.py, and let's modify it to flash a red, then blue NeoPixel light. Can we use concepts that we learned when working with the CPB, even though this is a cutie pie board and not a Circuit Playground Blue Fruit? Why, yes, Code Monster, we can! Setup is going to work the exact same way as we did when we worked with the CPB, although that board had 10 NeoPixel lights and this one only has one NeoPixel light. So first we want to make sure that we import the NeoPixel library. Then I'm going to highlight and delete these two lines that deal with the LED object, since we don't have that object. And instead we'll create a NeoPixel object the same way we did before. Why don't we call this pixel just like we did before. We'll set pixel equal to NeoPixel dot capital N Neo capital P pixel. And then in parentheses we'll say board.neopixel. Remember the board library for the cutie pie RP2040 has a NeoPixel object, but we only have one. So we'll say comma one. Again, the same setup that we did when working with the CPB's 10 NeoPixels. We just have one NeoPixel here. Then down in the while true loop, I'm going to get rid of these two statements that deal with the LED value, and I'm going to replace them with pixel.fill first with open parens, open parens, 255 comma zero comma zero. That will turn the NeoPixel red. Then I'm going to copy this line, paste it down below over the old LED line, and I'm going to make sure that this is a pixel fill, but this time it'll be 0, 0, 255, setting the light to blue. Then let's go ahead and save, and holy smokes, will you look at that? The light is flashing from red to blue. We indeed have a NeoPixel on our cutie pie, and it's working just like the 10 NeoPixels on our CPB. Code Monster, you are leveraging the circuit Python skills you learned on one board across multiple boards. You should feel your cross-platform power. Keep at it. There's more goodness to come.